Hello and welcome to episode 202 of the Rustic World Gaming Podcast. I'm your host and GM, Alex Newell, and with me today I have... Ben Meredith, Bryn Munro, Lydia Nicholas, and Helen Gould. And who are you playing? Zolf Smith. Um, uh, ha- Hamid Sir. Ha! Sir Harun Al-Tahan. Sell side bottom. Oh, wait, wait. Fell side bottom with fangs. <laughs> and Azu. How are we doing? I've got half the party currently feeling all lackadaisical. I've got one of you starting to uh, trip over your words. I'm doing all right, thanks. Yeah, you got a load of hit points. Let's ignore you. So what's Hamid's charisma score now? 15. Yeah, so so Cells is six. <laughs> <laughs> but it expresses itself differently for different characters. Yeah, That's yeah, true. yeah. That's uh, true. Cell is currently a beastie. So we are currently in the very bowels of Svalbard and we're making friends by literally no. scooping chunks of your personality and putting it into them. Thus friends are made. That's how you make friends, yeah. However, this friend may have tactically misstepped a little bit mm. by uh, placing itself in the middle of all of you and running out of move because Alex forgot he's playing Pathfinder instead of 5th Ed so if this turns into a comp stomp you know fair play uh, that's my fault Eh, I don't think it will be we are currently fighting basically the colour purple I think is your description (laughs) of it so far colour out of space no with that in mind then can I please pass the turn we're still in initiative to you Cell you are in a wide stairway corridor facing off against the colour purple. Mm, it seems to be a magically thing. I think Cell might know about as much as I do in that magically things probably immune to lots of stuff, but maybe magical frost bombs might actually do some damage. Okay. Now, a couple of things I should make you aware of since yep. this thing is deliberately up in everyone's grill. Yep. Most range attacks can trigger an attack of opportunity if you're trying to use a ranged attack mm-hmm. up close. Also, if you want to move away from the creature in this system, you're going to want to take a five foot yeah, step. Yeah, a five foot flap cell oh, is got that, flying. My mistake, you mm-hmm. are correct, a five foot flap. Yeah. Otherwise, you will be triggering attacks of opportunity as well. That's cool. So, cell is going to take a five foot flap. <laughs> can they five foot flap diagonally? Yep. Yep. Cool. There. Flip. So you're now next to Zolf. Zolf loads a hit point, Smith. Yeah, and going to throw frost bombs into the middle of it. I can make the decision to throw one in, see what happens, and then decide whether to throw the next, can't I? Correct, yeah, yeah, that's absolutely correct. So going to throw first bomb. Understood. You, You will need an attack roll. Yes, I... Yes, I'm. I'm getting there. Ideally, a terrible one. No. That seventeen. Seventeen. Mm-hmm. You miss. It goes blah, 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 and kind of warps around it. It's incredibly difficult to get a bead on it because it doesn't really have a shape. Okay, that's minus one bomb. You didn't roll poor enough to hit your allies, though. I'll, I'll say for that. Do you have splash damage, and do you apply that on a miss? Yes. I would allow you to apply splash damage because this thing's big enough. It is for listeners' benefit, about 15 feet by 15 feet across. Yeah, so if you're throwing something into the middle of it... In which case, it's 12 splash cold damage. Boo! Boo! Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Oh, dear. Okay, well, that's good. That tells me a lot. Mm. Um, I don't have any other bombs that might do the... The ah! leave. Yes, Cell flies off... You can't. You took a five-foot step. Cool. In which case, uh, Sal isn't going to waste more bombs. Let's let's be honest, okay? Hamid's the delicious one here. You're probably fine. In which case, then, Zolf, you are up. I cast Shield of Faith on Cell, mm. uh-huh. which gives them a plus two deflection bonus to AC. Nice. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, good shout, good shout. With an additional plus one to the bonus for every six levels you have. Okay, so you get plus three. AC, plus three, and you have that for ten minutes, so, like, the fight, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I will move, because I should take my own advice. Five, ten... No, not away! Don't move away! Twenty. This is going terribly, by which I mean it's actually going pretty much to plan. Azu, you are up. Right. Can I recommend holding your action again? No. And again and again? Azu is probably... See, Helen is thinking you could try to hit the thing... But Azu is frightened and tired. 
Mm. And I think is going to run instead. Especially because she said out loud, I agree with Zolf. Zolf is also running away. On the other hand, Azu is next to Hamid. So may instinctively attempt to protect Hamid. On the other, other hand... Toss the hobbit. (laughs) (laughs) Isn't he flying? Uh, mm. Yeah, so that means you can throw him even further. Throw him like a paper (laughs) aeroplane. Hamid, are you injured? I mean, Bryn, are you injured? Only a tiny bit. Okay. Visibly, Hamid seems fine. But I do have fewer hit points than normal because my con has been drained. Okay. Nom, 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 nom. There's nothing I can do to, to help with that right now. Yeah. I think I'm going to do what Azu would do, which is does not want to fight the thing. She does not know what it is. The last time she was in a void, it was not great. She's going to say, Hamid, come on. (laughs) And move. Might double move. One, two, three, four. Four. Yep. Because she can't go the other. So she is moving away from the void for audience, but in the opposite direction to Zolf because the void is between yes. her and Zolf. Yes. The void has split the party. Oh, dear. I'll have an attack of opportunity, please. What? No. Okay. If we knew it had reach, which you can presumably tell from the way it's tendrils snake, you could instead of double moving, take the withdraw action. Yeah, I'll allow you to make the withdrawal action, but you will trigger an attack of opportunity. I I misread its reach. Right. So with the withdrawal action means you get only get to single move instead of double move. You have to move in a straight line, but you do not trigger attacks of opportunity while withdrawing. It's an explicit thing, if though. If you're moving away from enemies in You can general. see that this thing has reach. What you can't tell is how much reach it has, yeah. because it has a blah, 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 shape. It's tangly. It is tangly. It's proper tangly. I am still going to move, because it sounds like I'm going to get attack of opportunity anyway. Understood. So when you moved, you triggered an attack of opportunity. I sort of pre-rolled it before I know, before I blah, blah, blah. I haven't looked at the score. Go here. What's your AC? My touch AC is only nine. (laughs) Okay, in which case then, give me a fort save. That's a 28. Boo. (laughs) (laughs) You take 11 damage. Are you carrying any mundane equipment, like a backpack or something similar, on your torso? Actually, yeah. I'm carrying mundane axes. Cool. And a morning star. As this thing sweeps out and basically stretches out to grab you as you go back, they disintegrate. That's fine. I never use them anyway. They just hurt. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're ornamental morning stars. <laughs> they 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 disintegrate. I don't feel so good, Mr. Stark style. Oh no, <laughs> Alex. I have realised this is this is another way that you can yet again get Zolf to have a fight in the nude. Because <laughs> it is a running theme of the campaign. So. <laughs> You may be ahead of me again. Excellent. <laughs> Good stuff. I don't. I really need to get some magical underpants. No. <laughs> Nude right Zolf for the win. <laughs> there go the Morning Star, the two throwing axes, and the adamantine axe that Azu picked up in Damascus. None uh, of which I have used at any point during this campaign. I don't think. <laughs> and they too have passed like dust in the wind. Aww. Literally like dust in the wind. In which case, though, you do get your move off. Okay. I'm just going to... Just, I still yell at Habit to hurry up and <laughs> run away with me. <laughs> Hello, Habit! Slightly Hello. different vibe. <laughs> Sod this dungeon. Let's live together. <laughs> S- Skrark is up. Uh, wh- I was just going to say, ha- I-, I only think I think you've only moved once. Helen, you can move again because you oh, took yeah. attack of opportunity. Oh, okay. In which case, I want I want to just have a little geography check with you. Is this? Like, high up? So, by this, you're talking about on the far side of the double doors, there are a pair of thrones. Yes, there is about 30 feet in step seating between the sort of uh, thrones that's looking down into the dead plant monster and a lit brazier between the throne and the plants. Give me a knowledge arcana, actually, for free. I don't don't have any. Okay, give me just a roll, a d20. (laughs) Okay. We've established what was going on in the magic lessons. (laughs) (laughs) The ever-burning brazier probably won't burn you. Like, ever-burning torches tend to be for light and warmth, but not, like, actual, like, 
pain. Okay. So you've had your first move action, second move action? Right. So because there's a plant in this direction, that is where the thrones are, I'm going to continue on my trajectory and end up next to Skrark here. Yep, that scans. In which case then, Skrark is now up. Skrark is going to continue to retreat from the creature. Still going the long way around this this big circular corridor. I can't believe I've managed to get you retreating. It's been so many years. <laughs> I'm so happy. I think they're going to double move. Ooh, speedy. So they've still just... Ah, oh, none of you has panicked and triggered a plant yet. They've still got just about line of sight back to the, the creature but they've gone quite far around, which means they can see the whole rest of the corridor, which you've already revealed for us. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, Hamid. Hamid. Yeah. You're up. Withdraw action. Boo! One, two, the worst three, action! Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 12. Straight line. Flying. The worst action. <laughs> flying triples my movement speed, and I love it so much. Excellent. Nice. At which point, the creature's turn. It doesn't move. It just seems to hover there. Quite oh, chill. Now that Cell threw a bomb at it, can I get another Knowledge Arcana check to try and work out why the frost didn't affect it? Or do I have not have yeah, time to Yeah, that's that very cheeky, but I'll allow it because I'm hitting you with very weird stuff. He's thinking while he runs. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a four, so it's probably irrelevant. Nothing. You learn nothing. Total, yeah. You learn nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Good. That pleases me. In which case, then, let me check something quickly. Just going to do a cheeky little range find. I think if the creature drains charisma from Cell, I mean, can you die of lack of charisma? So every stat has a specific effect when you get to zero. Mm -hmm. And I think the only one that kills you outright is if Con gets to zero. Right. Charisma knocks you into a coma. If it drops to zero. Is that Any the effect? Sure, yeah. Mental stats put you into a coma. Mm -hmm. Physical stats put you into a permanent paralysis apart from constitution, which is literally like your life force. So that's the one that'll kill you. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you may be ahead of me, though. Can I have a will save, please, as this migraine just starts to just seem to use up your entire world? Yep. Uh, oh. This is not going to go well. Seven. Oh, no. Cell takes three charisma drain and one constitution drain. Okay. So your core charisma stat has gone down by three points. To and your three? core constitution has gone down by one point. And not the bonus has gone down, the core stat itself has. Okay, cool. So they are still, oddly, at a higher total hit points than they would have if they weren't a beast. <laughs> yeah, that scans but they're pushing near the ceiling of what they would be. Can everyone please give me, apart from Cell, a perception check? 15. 21. 4. Hamid. I don't think Skrark has line of sight to Cell from the map. Mm, I still need a perception check okay. from Skrark and from Azu as well, please. 24. Oh, perfect. That makes me think the cutoff is 25. 31 <laughs> for Skrark. Okay, in, in, enough for basically uh, everyone, even even Azu. Yay! It wasn't clear on the first sort of drain, but certainly on the second one. As it's drained, it seems to have gotten denser and it seems to glow brighter with a purple light, whereas before it was sort of a dim light, now it's bright light that's coming out from it. Hmm. Definitely seeming to be powering up or something as it's feeding on people. Oh, boy. oh dear. In which case then, it doesn't move. Cell, you're up. I will remind you, you know this creature has reach, you just don't know how far the reach is. They're going to withdraw. Yeah, very sensible. So they've moved 30 feet. Understood. In which case then, Zolf, you are up. Cool. How beat up is Selican? So physically, they're not particularly wounded, but they're like nearly like slavering bestial. Like, rawr, 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 rawr. I don't know what how charisma they seem very unlikable suddenly <laughs> <laughs> to be clear you haven't taken much hit point damage then no Fine. not a huge amount Cell just looks like the kind of person who'd suddenly be really pro banker and you're not sure why <laughs> goodness me <laughs> at the moment Cell really looks like they might vote Tory <laughs> <laughs> which feels wrong you know you look at that and this feels deeply wrong but it's in which case, I am going to cast Sanctuary on them. Shout. Mm -hmm. Don't attack, just run. 
and then move. Do you still have an extant sanctuary upon yourself as well, Zolf? Mm-hmm. Cool, cool, cool. Yes, yeah, so basically, Lid, mm-hmm. if the creature attacks you, it has to pass a DC 16 will save, or it cannot. If you attack it, the effect ends. Okay. Also, if it attacks you successfully, the effect also ends. So if anybody attacks anybody, the effect ends, but it will prevent you from being attacked, hopefully, for a bit. Mm-hmm. Cool. Azu, you're up. Keeps pegging it. Understood. So a double move would be 40 feet, so... 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Slams into the wall a bit. I think that was 30. 35. Slams back into the wall a bit. And then that's... (laughs) (laughs) Clank, bang, clank, bang. Ah, Clank, bang, 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 bang. Run. Ah, Clank, bang, bang. (laughs) In which case then, Skrark is up. Continues to move. Understood. So for the listeners' benefit, everyone is now running down either side of this circular curve in a desperate attempt to sort of flee around it. Hamid, you're up. I mean, Hamid is very tempted to cast a parting scorching ray before he flees. You do you, dude. You do you. How loudly did Zolf yell, don't attack it? (laughs) You heard. This was a purely (laughs) silent room and nothing that you are fighting has made a single sound. The only noises have been from yourself. Hamid does not cast a spell at it. Right, so that means I get to double move, which is 120 foot, so... Wow! <laughs> flying Zoom. five. Actually, thinking about that, that's a really scary... If you actually visualise this encounter, this is just, you hear the cries of, ah! Uh, ah uh, no sound of the monster, no, no movement, no real combat, just... Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> weird. I didn't Very really spooky. conceptualise that. It's what happens when you're attacked by a colour. <laughs> I've made it all the way around the curve because flying is great. Zip. Congrats to you. I'm going to be taking another two turns. Yeah. As a run. <laughs> Give me a will save. Who? You. Me? Azu. Give me a will save. Oh, God. Okay. Roll good. I don't I don't like the sound of that, like, at all. <laughs> at all. Well, here we go. That's 21. Cool. You take three charisma drain and one constitution drain. <gasps> what? Touched me! That's not nope. fair. That's not it somehow fair. <laughs> doesn't move, but starts to fill your vision, very migraine style. You lose three charisma and one constitution. You are right. That's not fair. This is what happens if you keep making me up my game. This is what it looks like. More maths for everyone. So on that lovely, lovely, delicious nom nom nom. I'm going to take a break and come back and then nom 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 some more and no. eat up all of your stats, your delicious I mean, stats. Uh, ah. If it's actually eating the charisma, I, I think we're all just charmed by the void and can <laughs> chuck in all the rest. So I, for one, welcome our new very cool void overlord. <laughs> Nom, 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 nom. Delicious player character stats. Nom, no. nom. So Stop nom, nom, nom. Uh, okay. Coincidentally, sell at three charisma is making about that much sense. <laughs> <laughs> Zolf, you are up. Cool. Uh, I move twice. Yep. I'm just down the end of the curved corridor and can now see back into the Great Hall or the Grand Chamber or Council Rooms. Hamid and Zolf have almost simultaneously come round those corners and seen each other across mm. the uh, <laughs> yep. huge dead plant. Their eyes met across a planty <laughs> yeah. room. Azu, you are up. She's going to keep running, but she does want to hit it, but she's going to keep running. So she's going to go... Uh, the run action is just double my move speed, right? No, that's double move. Run is a specific thing. Don't do run, just double move. Although, I mean, if you want to run in a straight line, you could do that. It's still a straight line. Yeah. That's not I'd an accurate it. representation of what 80 feet is, though. No, no, it's not 80 feet, but you can draw <laughs> yeah. that line. And, oh, no, hang on a minute. You've got to get to at least, like, here to run past the blooming watcher plant. Yeah, so the fact that we also have to skirt around the watcher <sighs> plants, I think, yeah. a double you, move you, you is are, You than... are correct that this is built to stop you from just immediately going, bye! Yeah. Right, double move it is. Clack, 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 clack. Skrark is up. Skrark is going to move past the plant, but he's not going to move back into the main room because he's going to keep an eye on Azu. Aw, thank you. Understood. Hamid, you're up, nippy boy. So Hamid, I assume this is quite a big chamber with quite a high roof. 
Very high, yes. Hamid is going to fly forward a bit, back into the chamber, and then up and try and get... Because he, he needs to work around the Watcher plants, and he's going to have a perspective from quite high up into the chamber. That's very yeah. easy to do. Yeah, that's very, very easy. And does looking down on the dead plant give him any extra information about what's yeah, there? Yeah, give me give me a perception check. Let's get a good roll for the first time in a while, shall we? <laughs> that's a good roll. Oh, hells yeah. 33. Yay! 33! Okay, yeah, I can give you some more info with your top-down um, perspective. It looks like people were mid-experiment when this stuff went off. Oh, dear. You're only really able to see it from the top-down because there's a big sort of wreath of tendrils and dead plant all around it, which is kind of blocking a lot of the view. Hmm. But from the top-down, you can see that there's a large amount of sort of connected apparatus, which more or less seems to be connected... And, yeah, you get the distinct impression that someone was attempting to do something with this plant as it went off. There is a large amount of scientific equipment in the middle. Some sort of mechanism that might be designed to harm it, is what you're saying. I didn't say those words. Uh, those, those are your <laughs> words, but no? definitely okay. there is a large amount of equipment in the very midst of it that you wouldn't have seen from the sides looking in. It is dead. It is dead, isn't it? Still hasn't moved. Smells very dead. Oh, no. Okay, earlier you also mentioned the emanation of purple light from it. So, the emanation of the purple light still seems to sort of faintly illuminate it. Okay. You could get... I, is detect action a standard action? Detect magic would be a standard action, yeah, so... I, I, you, I did, you did detect magic earlier. Yeah. The, the, you didn't detect magic on that plant. As far as you can tell, it might be an ambient effect similar to that oh, weird. Okay. thing that was affecting... Yeah, it's odd. To be clear, this isn't yeah. a mistake at my end. It's really odd. It's very odd behaviour. Okay. Okay. That, I mean, that's my turn. Move and observe. Understood. My new very charismatic friend, who I've decided now sounds like silky butter, even though they're completely silent is going to pass straight through the wall and fly into the main chamber. No! Oh, thank goodness. Yeah, I thought it might do that. Don't like it. Very glad of that, because otherwise Cell would probably be unconscious. So the first thing is it does is it... Attack Cell through the wall? No! <laughs> it flies straight through the wall into the main chamber, but as it does so... Let me check something. Can everyone who can see into the main chamber give me a perception check? Yep. 24. 17 for Hamid and 21 for Skrark. Zolf, you're the only one that seems to notice this. It seems to have almost a drag effect towards the plant. So it flies in, so fine, and then it's almost like it's like there's a drain sucking it in towards the plant and it seems to be circumnavigating that. It's trying to cut Zolf off, it looks like, from the uh, plant itself, but it seems to be struggling to navigate space around the plant. It seems to be getting drawn towards it somehow. Okay. It's a very subtle effect, and you're the only one to notice it. Sure. I will shout about it when it's my turn. Cell, you're up. Cool. I think it's worth flagging here that playing... I'm thinking about playing a character who has three charisma. We've talked about migraines quite a bit, and I, at least, when I get migraine with aura, lose the ability to speak. And I am just very aware that playing a stat that has dropped so low where some of the, like, reading up on what Pathfinder, how Pathfinder kind of does it, I'm not all that comfortable with the way that it describes... That's fine, I understand what like, you're saying. ...social connections. So just, yeah, flagging up for, for listeners, the way I am playing it is the sort of way that, that is something that happens to me quite a bit, which is losing losing ability to, to speak and grab words sure. and, and finding faces and social things very distressing and confusing. Um, so that's just uh, where I'm going with it, because I, I think it could go into an awkward direction if I wasn't conscious about being un nearly unconscious. I get you. Yeah, it, it scans. It follows. Yeah. If that yeah, makes yeah. sense. Yeah, cool. I just wanted to flag that. And with all of that deep thinking around, uh, Cell's just going to run, <laughs> run, <laughs> while probably making that noise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but quietly, I think it's going to be a double move action so that they can steer around that watcher. Yep. So you're, you're nippy and all. All right, Zolf, you're up. Uh, looks like it's being dragged towards a plant. If we can chuck it in maybe it'll go away I don't know Cell just winces at this weirdly blank look 
uh, at you. Yeah, and uh, to be clear, I am yelling that at, like, the room. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think you can hear him. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then I'll move past it towards the plant and maybe see if I can drag it along with me. I don't know. Oh, Zolf. You will trigger an attack of opportunity. Yep, it needs to make a will save. What's the DC of the will save? 16. Six seeds. Yeah. 25 to hit. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, fine. Four save. 25. 25. Boo! <laughs> well, I'm not that concerned. It's only 11 damage. However, could you please describe to me what mundane uh, equipment you are carrying? <laughs> uh, <laughs> time to resolve to lose his trousers again. What area? So, oh, that's good. No, no, he's, he's right. I, I need to pick an area. <laughs> Don't pick the trousers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're gunning for shirtless Zolf. Interesting, interesting. Torso. Uh, my coat mm. disintegrates. Oh, I like that coat. You've had it ages. Yep. Uh, I'm still wearing... I do have a magical breastplate, so that is... Sure, sure, but your coat's just... Yeah. Into dust. The trench coat. Poor old coat. Azu, you are up. All right, keeps running. One, two, three. Flash into the wall. Bash into the wall again. <laughs> Six. I think it's worth saying, because I, I just wasn't looking at the map what the first time you said that, so I thought you were running into either side of the corridor. And so I just think it's worth now I'm actually watching how Helen is moving the character. Like, no, she's just hugging the yeah. edge of the wall. She's not banging onto either side of the corridor. Like a bowling ball when the bumpers are up. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. Like, that's genuinely what I thought was happening. So just in case any of the listeners have as poor a spatial awareness imagination as I do, no. Um, right, ends up there. Understood. Scrock is up. Scrock does nothing. Understood keeping an eye on as you keeping an eye over the room maybe move a single step just to have a better vantage point yeah that's fine Hamid can you give me a perception check please 30 total as the oh no sorry I misread my dice 28 total still enough as the <laughs> as the colour purple moved into the main chamber you're able to discern from your perspective a specific component within all of that morass of equipment still seems to be live and seems to have sort of activated by its presence and seems to be eliciting a sort of faint purple glow as it is there and it definitely seems to have reacted to this thing's presence the rest of the equipment seems dead Hamid uses his 60 foot of fly to land in the middle of the plant (gasps) next to all the equipment oh Hamid oh Oh. Hamid oh no oh Hamid you're fine Oh my god! <laughs> He's so I always, Whenever he does that, like the pitying voice, everything's gonna be okay. It's like the weird yep. reverse. Like, oh no. I feel it's I feel fine. like he's signalling we have to use the mechanism to get rid of this mm. thing. But if he's if he's not signalling that, then fair enough. I you know, he's he's being a good GM. He's not laying it out, but I feel like he's he is at least hinting at a potential out for this situation. <laughs> it's like there's a hint in the room, but I'm not sure where it is. What I'm enjoying doing is the audience can't see the map, which is the plant in the middle of the room is what? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, God, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65. It's about, it's about, you know, 60, 70 feet across on each side. I love putting the biggest, baddest monster in the middle of the room and then hitting you with something that you can't even see. <laughs> I have asked like four different times whether it's definitely dead too, because I've been <laughs> scared. You land in the middle of it. You notice that there seems to be a uh, purple glow seems to dance upon your skin, almost like um, the spell Fairy Fire. Presumably Hamid recognises that spell. I can't remember what that does off the top of my head. It sort of illuminates incorporeal stuff. It illuminates incorporeal stuff, illuminates things that are invisible. It makes it, it basically outlines stuff. It's, it's basically like hitting something with a glitter bomb, really. <laughs> I guess I take my standard action to study whatever mechanisms are here to work out what they're doing and how they're used. Give me a knowledge arcana. Yeah, this would be a really good time for a good roll. Oh, 19, get in. That is a total of 36. Yes. 36? Congratulations on hitting the high DC I didn't think people would necessarily hit. Ooh. So... <laughs> I'm not joking, it was 35. Uh, okay. I'm not surprised, that sounds about right for a high-level thing. So, someone has been using Magitech here 
Mm. Specifically mm. to force planar adjustments in a localized space. Now, what that actually means for this is you are confident from that. You look at this and go, brainwave moment. You look at this and just go, I oh, oh, I know what it is. I know, I know what all this is. Basically, the glowing component appears to be your kill switch. Okay. Ooh. That appears to be your kill switch. All of this apparatus around it appears to have been an attempt at basically kicking it into life It appears to have a power source that is derived from planar interactions themselves. So you know how a thermocouple takes energy from a hot place and a cold place? You bash them together, you get energy. That, but with planes. This thing is fueling itself using the planes. All of this apparatus seems to have been used to kick it into gear. Now that it is extant, it's on there. You're pretty certain it is feeding on the energy of whatever that big thing is that's been attacking all of you. And you're all but certain that the the one life component is the now viable kill switch and that what it's trying to do is kill the planar activity that is in the immediate area. And you also see that there is an easy way to disconnect it. All of this other apparatus has been used up in its creation. That's your boy. Okay, that is probably my six seconds. (laughs) Like I said, (laughs) brainwave. Yeah, so... (laughs) I don't know if I should ask more now or if I should wait till my next initiative turn, but obviously I want to grab this thing and fly off with it, which I can't do till the next turn anyway, really. But I also want to know, is there like an obvious off switch and do I think pressing it would kill the weird planar entity in this room or disconnect it from this place? You rolled such an obscenely high... (laughs) It was a really good roll. It wasn't a natural 20, but... There is what seems to be an off switch... You think that the solution that you're looking for might be to bring this thing closer to it rather than to try and turn it off. If you turn it off, you're more likely to make life easier for it. This thing is hunting for planar energy to eat. You are clearly fighting some kind of planar entity that has either been created by the plant or created by the device. You're not sure, but that's the interaction at play here. Okay, if there's time, I will use a free action to shout, I I think this thing might stop it. And that is definitely all I have time for. Understood. At which point, the creature is facing off against a tasty, tasty boy full of hit points. No. Yep. (laughs) Rather distressingly, and I'm annoyed because this is Ben playing well, it makes no sense for it to attack anyone else. I really want it to, but it doesn't. Yep. So I would guess I'm going for beefy hit points McGee. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah, Watch go on, touch, drain my hit points, see if I care. All <laughs> <laughs> my charisma, see if I care. Watch your touch, JC. Oh, right, 15. Okay, it hits at least. Give me a four save that'll ruin my day. Uh, it was a rubbish roll. Uh, 17. Okay, finally. And then I roll rubbish, fine. <clears throat> it's 19 damage. Uh, cool. And... In, do you have anything sort of upon your arms or basically upper half of the body that's mundane? But your trousers are fine. Yes. Yeah. Equipment, but not living flesh, and hair counts as living flesh. Uh, Suspenders, so his trousers fall down. <laughs> trousers fall down. Trousers. No, I said upper half. I rolled for it. I'm sorry. I want it to be the trousers. Um, I really, I mean, really want to see it. But My no. shirt? If you haven't, if, you, if it's already gone, it's fine. But anything that you are wearing, basically from the waist up, that is non-magical, is gone. It's just. All right, yeah. So my, I'm just wearing. A, I've just got a breastplate on at this point. Yeah, that's fine. In which case, then I think that's all it does. I do hate it when you play correctly, Ben. It does <laughs> harsh my buzz. What can I say? Good. Cell, you're up. Cell's gonna fly in. And then from, let's say, they've done one move action, so they're at the, what's the word, Uh, threshold of the big circle thing. at the threshold of the main main chamber. But let's say high up. I'm going to say they don't need to fly upwards because they're just maintaining the height that they had in the corridor, which had stairs going down. So they're just just high, that's maybe 5, 10, 15 up. Yeah, that scans. In which case, I'm just going to wonder if they can do a perception check and so begin to see what's going on with the mechanism stuff, because that's the sort of thing they might be useful in. Give me a perception check. Ah, uh, it's a 16. They get a 16. <laughs> Definitely someone was doing an experiment, but with that, you're not, you're not yeah. spotting high enough for the uh, info that Hamid's managed to gain. 
I mean, Cell is fatigued or whatever, magically sleepy and drained. You've got, lo- like, Cell's got a lot on. They have a lot Cell's got a lot on right now. Cell, Cell, like, looks at the sort of experiment that often they literally dream about, like, that you are within a, a, a Cell daydream of Magitech and biomechanical weirdness, and they're just like, oh, I've got a headache. <laughs> In which case, then, Zolf, you're up. Cool. I will convert the level four spell Divine Power into a Cure Critical Wounds on myself. Understood. Solid. That works. 4d8 plus 10. Oh, God, I don't have that many d8s. <laughs> d8. 4d8? Four? Why not just ask for a d12 and be done with it? Go. Uh, 20... 34. I love the idea of Ben at, you know, his uh, at his game shop. Can I interest you in this D8? No, I'll have 19 more D6s, though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in my dice bag, because I play World of Darkness and Exalted, I have, like, 40 D10s. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so many dice that you run on. Uh, but, yeah, uh, so I'm back up to 60 hit points. And then I... Hate I, it. I hate it. ...don't do anything, because I'll provoke an attack of opportunity, and that's it, yeah. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. I'll take a five-foot step towards the plant closer, just to, you know, draw it on. I hate you. I hate you so much. Azu, you're up. Still running. <laughs> bang, 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 <laughs> bang. Bang, Look, Azu is an artillery cannon, bang. by which I mean, you don't move around quickly, but you're really bang. hurt when you're hit. <laughs> so that's uh, one of my moves, and then five... Azu, you see, hammered in the depths of the dead plant, lit with an yep. eldritch purple glow. You see Zol facing off against an admittedly also purple glow. <laughs> yes. Cell is, is... You see Cell with a headache. Cell has a headache. What do you do? <laughs> I'll have it get out of there. <laughs> Fair play. <laughs> Skrark is up. So Skrark is just, as as you comes past him, we'll just check that you're okay, basically. Aww. And then run with you and keep on running and probably kind of head slightly back towards the north to get a better vantage point over the room while avoiding the watcher plants quite close to, you know, the kind of the edges of the uh, de- big dead plant, but not like diving into it. Understood. Hamid, you're up. Hamid grabs the power source, the planar power source thing. You are certain, by the way, because you've been careful, you did roll high, you can grab and yank. There's no, like, yep. ten actions to uncouple it or anything. Yep. Yeah, Hamid does that. And then uses his fly move to move up and over the plant towards the creature, depending on exactly how he's probably going to go probably had to go up a bit and then along a bit so can probably get to about there I reckon but higher up so he's basically still over over the plant but like higher up enough to be out of the the plant in a literal <sighs> sense I hate both of you for a reason that I can't articulate understood it is clear as you've moved closer this thing is warping up towards whatever it is like it is being elongated out and then it is its turn. The most damning blow. It moves five foot closer to Harris because of how its behaviours work. <laughs> Think Ghostbusters when they're sucking it into the trap. There is a sudden bright, blinding, white, arcing light that splits between the two as whatever this thing is and whatever that device is interact with one another violently. It is a searing, bright, magnesium flare white. Everyone is temporarily blinded, just there is nothing to see but whiteness. And as all of your vision returns, my new charismatic friend... Is missing. And for flavour, because it took a five foot step, I definitely try and take an attack of opportunity and it's slorped away from my blade. <laughs> <laughs> you just shake your fist at it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, fair play. I'm just glad I didn't have to fly inside it personally. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I had I had considered it, but no. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh. Would you Yay. like to know a a fact to do with this that will please you immensely, Helen? Yeah. Would you like to know what that monster was called? What was it called, Alex? 
the colour out of space. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> because Pathfinder and D&D are nothing if not derivative. Yeah. <laughs> Can okay, I recommend the Nicolas Cage film, The Colour Out of Space, for something that's absolutely book wild? Fair play. I have to admit, you have you have engaged and mm-hmm. managed to avoid the uh, panic I hoped to ensue. You didn't trigger your watchers. And you've got yourself a kill switch, so I... So, so that's pretty... I mean, panicked isn't quite the right word, like... I mean, you're like, oh, everyone's fine. Cells over there, like, massaging their forehead and rocking slightly, like... <laughs> well, we're alive and we can um, comfort each other afterwards. And then we need to run again. It'll be all right. Yes. <laughs> but until then, bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Rusty Quill Gaming is a podcast distributed by Rusty Quill and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 4.0 International License. Today's episode was directed by Alexander J. Newell and produced by Hannah Preisinger. To subscribe, buy merchandise, or join our Patreon, visit RustyQuill.com. Rate and review us online, tweet us at the Rusty Quill, visit us on Facebook, or email us via mail at RustyQuill.com. Join our community on the Discord or via Reddit at r slash RustyQuill. Thanks for listening. 